Howdy, y'all. Taylor James Johnson, film obsession. We and just poster boy. and oh yeah. God. Let's do that again. Apparently, everyone on screen needs an introduction. Taylor James Johnson, right here, and poster boy. Poster boy. Yes. Together, we just saw Kingsman. The Golden Circle. This is the second Kingsman film we've had. And um, if you like the first one, you're going to have a good time with this one. It is a little more um, silly and wacky. That doesn't necessarily mean that's a bad thing. So the interesting thing about these Kingsman films is that they are... Uh, it's a mixture of homage and satire. It is obviously inspired, influenced by James Bond films, um, but it is not a James Bond film, of course. It is its own original thing, yet it reminds us of, you know, familiar franchises. So I think the reason why the Kingsman did so well, the first one, is that, you know, we got a dose of originality, which people like, and we got a dose of the familiar, which people like. So you're like, hey, this feels like a movie I've kind of seen before, but it's a new take on it. And I actually like that better than Hollywood going out and just revamping James Bond again, you know? Like, I, I honestly enjoyed the these two Kingsman films better than, than any of the last James Bond movies, and I like them. You know, but th they take themselves too seriously. And that is where uh, Kingsman comes in, is it, it rides the line, right on the line of taking itself seriously and not taking itself seriously at all. To the point of where they're, you know, making very, very ridiculous, almost slapstick type of jokes. But but it works in this film. The, the director, Matthew Vaughn, has found an interesting balance of... Of, um, of humor and action and silliness and but but there's stakes you're still like oh don't die characters I like um, but you're still gonna laugh at the the you know the funny little things that happen and it's just really ridiculous it's it's a, it's a science fiction film actually it feels like it takes place in the future so it's like it's either in the future or it exists in, a, in an alternate universe where technology has advanced <laughs> a little bit more because mm -hmm. because you know there, there's robots and, and crap yeah, like that. There's yeah. like actual robots in this movie, and uh, Julianne Moore was was a, a, the perfect Bond villain, uh, and also the perfect satire of the Bond villain. Her her evil layer, you know, like Doctor Evil. You know, the, the the films they they don't go as far as Austin Powers, but you know, it's kind of halfway there. And Julianne Moore has this evil layer that is just like the, the perfect cheesy, silly but not stupid evil layer. It is. A 50s diner in an ancient, uh, like, lost Mayan civilization or something. And she mixes those together and she has robots. And just saying it out loud, I'm like, all that was in that movie? And then there's the electric lassos and and people coming back from the dead, basically. And it's a science fiction mm. film. It sounds ridiculous to say out loud, <laughs> it but... Is. The cool thing about it, at least you could feel it in the audience, is that the audience was... They were along for the ride, and they were just, oh, yeah. like, ready for, like, okay, this is a silly movie. Let's be silly just for an hour and a half or two hours. Yeah, it, was, it, it felt was, like a long it movie. two-hour movie. They went along for the ride. you got to open up your heart to silliness. Um, and then once you do, you can really, really enjoy it. And then they throw in these amazing fight scenes, these amazing action scenes that are just filled with style. And it's not over-stylized, not, like, 300 or... Or something like that. This is, it's a little bit of, uh, you know, you, you get a feel of like Edgar Wright mixed with Zack Schneider, but in a good way, you know, and it, Matthew Vaughn has really found his voice and found his style. And I, I wish there were more films like this, actually, films that just had fun. You know, they just, it just, they just went out there and they just had fun. They're like, let's just make a silly movie. Like, they don't do that anymore. Like, just make a fun action movie. Where like weird things happen. Let's just do it. Like that's just that's what it sounds like. All the producers sat in a room, sat in a long Kingsman table, yeah. and they're just like, "What are our favorite parts about the James Bond movies?" And they're like, "Well, this, 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 this." Well, that sounds silly. I'm like, well, yeah, let's just do it. That's what people used to like, and and now we don't have that. And you know, everything goes full circle and comes back, and the trends of society, and 
And that's what these films are doing. They're taking the silliness of the past and putting them in the modern day and giving it a new twist. So, yeah, I mean, I wouldn't necessarily go out and say, like, oh, my gosh, this was a great film or anything. But I, I definitely, like, I found myself laughing out loud and smiling. Oh, yeah. And so did the audience that we were with. They were clapping at moments, you know, when the character achieves things. They, So you, the the audience really cared about the characters and... And even the villains, you know, had a, had motivation. They weren't just like, I'm evil and I'm taking over the world. You know, they, they had, like, their reasons. And, um, and, yeah, it was just a fun, silly action movie. I, I need to warn you, if you're a Channing Tatum fan, the advertisements kind of tricked us into making it, it very seem, misleading. Yeah, so did you feel like he was going to be a big star? I thought he was going to be, like, one of the main characters. Like alongside Eggsy and all the other, like, main people. Yeah. Even the posters and stuff had, had Channing yeah. right next to Eggsy, and you felt like there was going to be this cool team-up buddy cop comedy thing, but Channing, his character is very important, uh, but he's not really in it that much. Uh, same goes for, for Jeff Bridges. Uh, I think the real, like, uh, breakthrough performance is uh, Pedro Pascal from Narcos. Uh, Agent Whiskey with the lasso. I think he kind of uh, showed us that he could be a movie star. I think that mm -hmm. this guy has a pretty big career ahead of him. I think this will be the launching point. This in Narcos. Yeah. But he has this going on, and he's showing that he's more than just a more than just a TV actor. One of those TV actors. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing what he does next. Even the, the actor who plays Eggsy, um, I, I feel like he has a good career ahead of them. Um, mm -hmm. I think so. And yeah, it was just a just a fun, fun action movie, which uh, we haven't seen in a long time. And we, we even got dressed up because we're like statesmen. Yes. Yeah, we're definitely repping our statesmen. Yes, made in America. Yeah. Oh. Um, but um, but yeah, I guess I keep going back to the word fun. I hate using that word, but it really was fun. And sometimes movies are supposed to be fun. Yeah, after these latest James Bond movies, you're like, you know, we have to get into Bond's inner psyche and. You know what he means to be dark and gritty, and yeah, I like that that exists in our like we have in, in this yeah. world that we live in, full of all these movies. We have multiple options for our action spy movies, and I'm so glad that Matthew Vaughn has given us this type of spy movie, and hopefully this will inspire Hollywood to to do more like this and not just reboot everything. Like, if there's something you want to reboot, maybe say, like, maybe there's a different way to tell that story or tell a, an original story that its roots are at that beloved franchise. Like, like I, I would honestly rather see a Kingsman-style Indiana Jones-influenced original idea than see another Indiana Jones movie. And I love yeah. Indiana Jones. Uh, same goes with, like, Ghostbusters or anything. Name, name a major franchise and give it the Kingsman treatment, make it a fun, wild ride that understands that it's an homage to a beloved genre, and uh, just let them have fun. And, uh, yeah. Fun. Do you like fun? fun? Go see this movie if you like fun. And Elton John. And Elton John, yeah. Elton John. <laughs> oh, man. The Rocket Man has, like... Like, it's more than a cameo. Like the rock, he, was, he had a bigger part than Channing Tatum did. He did. <laughs> he did. He was in it more than Channing Tatum. Yes, he was. Uh, Elton John is. Great ah, mm -hmm. so yeah, if you're a fan of Elton John, yes, you like Kingsman: Golden yes. Circle. And I'd like to mention that this is the second film to come out in just a few months, starring Channing Tatum. Starring Channing Tatum that predominantly features the John Denver song, Country Road. Like, Lucky Logan had that song as like the climax of that film, and now this song, this yeah, now this film kind of does the same thing, and they both have Channing Tatum. Conspiracy? I think so. Has to be. It's the only logical solution. Yeah, this is the best James Bond film to come out in a long time. And they even, they even have the film take place in Kentucky, which it's funny because James Bond went to Kentucky for uh, Goldfinger, and everyone makes fun of like the best James Bond movie actually takes place in Kentucky, and uh, now the Kingsmen are in Kentucky. Well, uh, over and out, film obsessors for Queen and Country. 
Yeehaw. This is Taylor James Johnson. And this is Poster Boy. Without a poster. They didn't give us a poster this time. No poster. But that doesn't mean he has to change his identity or who he is. Yeah. Like, he's still Poster Boy without a poster. I'm po Poster Boy in here. Mm hmm. You should get that checked out. Right, well, manners maketh man, so please thank you.